Okay, so uh, none of us here works uh, really in this area, and the question was uh, initially raised by uh, Dror Feitelson, and, and his motivation comes from uh, uh, Dror is working in uh, the theory of systems, large systems in computer science, and uh, so to the little extent that I will be talking about the potential applications of this, this is what I will have in mind. But it seems to me that some of the questions and some of the techniques uh, <coughs> go beyond this, uh, uh, this uh, kind of application. Okay, so the setup is, is uh, quite simple. Uh, we have n users and they're sharing uh, m resources. Okay. And I can assume, and I will, that costs nothing, I mean, in terms of limiting uh, the applicability. There is a unit resource, uh, a, a, a unit, uh, one unit of uh, supply of each uh, resource. Then there is another ingredient of, of the model, which is uh, entitlement, which is a little bit less obvious to understand, so I'll explain it uh, a bit later on. For the moment, these are just positive numbers, one, so associated with each user is, is one positive number called uh, displayer's entitlement. EI, yeah, it's positive, and the sum of the EIs is one. So bear with me, in, in very soon you'll understand precisely what these are. And the users uh, want to make use of the, of the resources, and uh, they, uh, they, make, they apply for, for, for uh, the, so many the, the requests, a user I uh, requests uh, Rij of uh, resource uh, J, and these are non-negative numbers. Now this, this is one of the critical uh, aspects of, of this model. We're in a situation where you cannot exchange. So if you're thinking about really uh, the, the computer system application, it's not possible for you to, for example, have more CPU uh, and less bandwidth, and, and you would still uh, be able to, to do what you want. So these numbers are fixed, uh, so users are un unwilling, or perhaps if you're thinking about other situations, perhaps there are external rules that uh, rule out these possibilities. Th these numbers are carved in stone. You cannot uh, change them. So what we're allowed to do is find a factor that we will multiply the requests of each user by. So what we have to do is, is select positive numbers, xi, for the ith player, and provide the, the ith player with this much, xi times his request of capacity j for, for every j. Or perhaps in a more picturesque way, uh, I want to have fruit salad. In my fruit salad, I want to have 20% of bananas, 10% of apples, and so on. The proportion, how my fruit salad is going to be composed, that's a given, you cannot touch it. How much of it? Well, I'd like to have as much as possible, and let's say you, you're running the show. You'll decide how much you're going to give me. So just to wrap up, the, this is a, a technical part of, of, of the presentation. So we are given these numbers Rij, we are given the number, numbers Ei, and, and our job at the moment, we, we still haven't specified it, is to seek some, some positive numbers Xi, where the main aspect is going to be, there, there are two things, uh, uh, feasibility and fairness. Okay, feasibility is quite obvious, and the non-trivial parts coming in, in explaining what fairness means. But feasibility is, is obvious to you. We have a one unit of supply from each resource, and, and of course we cannot give more than we have. So in other words, if you take any, any resource, then what you have given away from this resource cannot exceed one. That's, that's quite obvious. This is what we've given from resource J to player I, we're summing over all I, and that cannot exceed one. And if you're used to linear programming and this kind of thing, and I think many of you are, then, then what we're looking for looks quite familiar if you saw linear programming, but wait, this is not a linear programming problem, you'll, you'll see soon. What we're looking for is a positive vector x such that x times r is less than one. Big R is the matrix whose ij entry is rij, how much player i is requesting from resource j. Okay, now I have to talk about entitlement. It's part of the problem definition, 
And I have to explain what, what this means or what this could mean. And this can be interpreted in, in more than or in could, be, could mean different things in, in uh, different setups. If we're really talking about a, a big computer system, then perhaps it's a system that was built up by uh, uh, several users uh, and, and each one contributed that much money to, to the creation of the system and, and therefore this tells you how, I mean, this determines this user's entitlement. Uh, perhaps it's, uh, you know, all these users are part of, of one bigger thing, perhaps there are different departments in one bigger operation and, and management decides to give priorities to different activities. And another possibility is that actually they're not uh, big N uh, users, but actually they're big M, which is a much bigger number of users. And we are, sh we are really respecting each player or each user in the same way. So you could think of what will correspond later on to entitlements of one of them. The role of N in this description is that there are N big N types of users and the AI just tell you, EI just tell you the proportion of, of users from, from each type. That's the meaning of entitlement. Okay, so, so far I think everything is quite simple and clear. If you have any experience with, with the optimization problems, everything should look very familiar and, and easy. This is, the most, this, is, this is the most subtle part and, and I have to admit that it took me some time to, to get used to this definition, so let me uh, elaborate on this. When do we define, how, how do you define a fairness? So the key ingredient in, in understanding fairness oops, is, is the notion of bottleneck. That's still very simple. Uh, uh, we say that, that a certain resource is a bottleneck resource in a situation that, so let's just make sure, E, the vector of, of entitlements, R, the matrix of requests, that's fixed. Now we've already also chosen already a positive vector X. Not yet, not yet, that will come. It's, that will come. And you say that, that the J resource is bottleneck if it's used up. In other words, if the J coordinate of this vector X times R is one, that, that's called the bottleneck. But make sure by the, that you do follow this point that this definition of bottleneck depends on the choice of, of X. And now we come to fairness. And then this I think conceptually is the most uh, subtle, uh, subtle part of, of this talk. So when do we want to consider uh, 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 this allocation? So, so X determines the resource allocation. When do we want to consider it fair? What we want is to make sure that we somehow satisfy each user or that no, no reason, as, as uh, the title of the talk uh, says, that no one, no user has any grounds for, for uh, uh, complaining about uh, the fairness of uh, so one possibility, we're looking at user i, perhaps x i is one, in other words, you got what you asked and there is no reason to complain. The other possibility is, 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 is the most subtle part. Perhaps you have not received everything that you've uh, requested, so x i is less than one. However, there is a bottleneck resource on which what you're getting is at least your entitlement. In this case, this is when we define X to be fair. So in other words, and as I said, that's the, the most subtle part, so let me elaborate on this. For each user, user either the user is receiving the full and, uh, the, 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 his full request or there is a resource on which this user is receiving the, this user's entitlement but moreover, this is the bottleneck resource. So if I wanted to increase the, the, the share of, of, of this user, then I have to harm other users because there is a bottleneck resource uh, on which this happens. So in other words, th this is what we call, uh, there are no, uh, no reason for justified complaints. So let's talk about this. Let me just say, the, the, main, the two main things that, that I'm presenting here is this definition that I, just, that I just presented, and a theorem that says that such a solution always exists. And I will say a few words about how this is proved because there is something quite interesting and at least uh, something that I, don't, I haven't seen uh, elsewhere, so it's perhaps interesting to, to explain. 
OK. okay. So uh, if you like myself and you've done a lot of, of linear programming, this looks very much like, like a linear program. And it's very natural to try and use the, the machinery in uh, linear optimization to somehow solve uh, the problem this way. But this is not. Uh, so the point is this. If the set J of bottleneck resources is fixed, then finding the X is, is a linear problem. But there are two to the M such possible subsets. In particular, this gives you a, a, an exponential in M algorithm to do this. But without knowledge of this, it's, it's not, a, a, it's not a, a linear program. In particular, as, as we'll see, I, I will show you some examples and I will give you more indications on why this is not, no, I'm, I'm not saying perhaps there is a way to, to do some very clever exercise and apply LP here. But certainly what I'm saying, at least not in the obvious way. I, I wasn't able to, to make an obvious connection. And it seems quite different, difficult, uh, quite dif different, I'll, I'll show you later. So here, let's, let's take a very simple example just to illustrate. Let's say that this is, this is the request matrix. So everyone is requesting one, except that uh, user i is requesting zero of, of, of uh, resource i, and otherwise they're requesting one. Well, here are two, uh, and, all, and all entitlements are a quarter. So here is one possibility. X is a quarter, a quarter, three eighths, three eighths. Okay? It's very easy to check that this is a feasible and, and the fair solution where the bottleneck resources are one or two. But of course, you see the symmetry here, so you won't be surprised that there is also this, this solution, three eighths. This is why I chose a simple example that's easy to see. On the fly, so uh, three eight, three eight, a quarter and a quarter is also feasible and fair. And here, the bottleneck resources are, are three and four. So let's average these two solutions. You get five eight, five eight, and so on. This is a feasible solution, but it's not fair. So this is really, in, in some way, not a very good example because, as everyone will see immediately, the right thing to do here is give everyone a third, and then. You're completely using all the resources. It's, of course, feasible and fair and so on. But this is just to illustrate that, that one basic property that you get in solving linear problems doesn't hold here. And so this is a different, uh, it's a different uh, 5 sixteenths. Thank you. Sorry. Yes. Why is this fair? Because, well, no, no, it exhausts, the, let's say the first one, it exhausts not one and two. Twice three eighths plus a, twice three eighths plus a, plus a quarter is one. So here is the theorem. The theorem is a, a, that a, such a solution always exists. So give me a matrix uh, of Rij, which are between zero and one. Give me entitlements which are positive and, and add to one. Then there is a, a, exists a vector x that's positive, such that xr is less than or equal to one. So that for every i, there is an index in, in there is a bottleneck uh, index for which x i oops x i times r i j. So how much user i is receiving from resource j is at least this uh, user's entitlement. And where J is defined, that's that's the main theorem. Okay, and I will. No. Oh, that's that's the definition. That's the set J. Okay. So that that's the theorem, and I, I will uh, tell you a little bit about uh, how how this is proved. Okay. So uh, of course, one thing that uh, you learn when when you do optimization and so on is that the right way of looking at questions like this is, is geometric. So let's. Look at, this, at these things geometrically. So the constraints that x is positive and xr is less than or equal to, to 1, as usual, that defines a, a convex polytope. And this polytope uh, is sitting in the positive orphans of the n-dimensional space. This is the positive part. And each constraint is a hyperplane, which is a facet of, of this polytope uh, P. Well, actually, in, as I initially presented the problem, perhaps there are resources that, that are redundant. I mean, you solve everything, then automatically you solve them, then you do a pre-processing and you throw those away. So that's 
really doesn't matter much. So this is, this is the setup. From this perspective, from this geometric perspective, uh, what does it mean that the solution is feasible? It just means that X is the spoiled of B. Fairness uh, means that X has to sit on the upper boundary. So I'm, I'm using this notation for boundary just to make sure that I'm, I'm not talking about the hyperplanes X, X I equals zero. So this, this just refers to the upper part of, of the boundary of this polytope. So in order to be fair, you have to be on the boundary. There, there is more conditions there. It's, it's more subtle, but it's necessary. So we're looking for points on the upper boundary of, of P. And I, I don't go into the precise details here, but, but the set uh, J, as, a, as we said, what's bottleneck depends, depends on, on X. How do you see it geometrically? It's precisely determined by the set of facets on which you reside. So it's a polytope. Vertices of this polytope are where certain facets meet, and your bottleneck resources are precisely corresponding to, so you're at a vertex, let's say, then, or at another higher dimensional face, certain facets meet there, meet there, these are exactly the bottleneck resources. So th this is how the, the geometry and the, the definition as an optimization problem uh, complement each other. So why, why, is it, uh, why is it difficult? If you start thinking about these things, uh, it's really, perhaps, you know, let, let me take a minute and uh, the first thing that you normally do in a situation that just to get a feeling for this is you do this with two users. You do this in the plane. And then the problem is, is really easy because the polytope P is just a polygon. And you simply scan the vertices in order and one of them will solve what you want, and, and that's it, you're happy. It's very simple. So in, in A equals 2, this theorem is, is really easy. What complicates matters is that in higher dimensional space, convex polytopes are quite complicated combinatorial objects. There is the whole, the whole structure of, of uh, the face that is of a polytope, and that's a complicated uh, mathematical object, and we don't have good algorithmic methods to deal with it. It ha can have exponentially many vertices. It's, it's, a tough, uh, it's a tough thing to deal with. And so, perhaps a little paradoxically, the idea came up that perhaps in order, if this is, if this is where uh, if this is where uh, our trouble coming is coming from, this com compl complexity is coming from the combinatorial, the rich combinatorial structure of, of this polytope, perhaps we avo avoid the combinatorics altogether and try something continuous. So what about this domain? Uh, it's a closed down uh, domain in, in, in N space. Reduce the coordinates you're staying in because that's a matrix R is, uh, the matrix R is the non-negative matrix. And we are trying to replace this domain P by another domain Q that sits in the first quadrant of, of Rn that in, mo in many respects is very similar to, to P. It's closed down, it's convex, except I want to smoothen out the, this uh, upper envelope with the hope that that will simplify things for me. So what I want to consider instead of this polytope P that I had before is the domain Q that's convex, closed down, and has a smooth upper boundary, okay? Sounds perhaps a little strange, but as you will see, I mean, this immediately raises more questions than answers, but let's see, it's the situation is, uh, you'll see, is, is quite good, but it takes a little thinking how to get there. But, so let, let me first raise the questions that come up. How do you even describe such a, this domain Q? Uh, how do you test feasibility? What happens to fairness? You know, previously we said that fairness is determined by the set of or in order to, even bottlenecks are, are determined by the set of facets on which your X lies. What, what happens to all these things? So things are not so bad. And, and we start with, with an easy observation. By the way, here this should be a max. This mean should be a max. Uh, we can write, we can express this P as X is, is positive. The vector X is positive. And in addition, there is this function phi that's less than or equal to one, where phi is the max of the R. Th this is just another way of saying it. It's, it's really, I'm not saying here anything useful, just the fact that it is possible to express the domain P 
in, in terms like this. So what I want to do is to replace this function P by another function and see if, uh, uh, so I want to replace P by some F and consider a domain Q that's defined like this. X is positive, X is in RN, and, and f of x is less than or equal to 1. What, what about this f? I just want to more or less mimic the same things that I had in the original problem. It has to be concave. It has to be positive in the vicinity of the origin of R, Rn in the, in the first quadrant. It has to be monotone increasing in each variable and sufficiently smooth. But don't worry about this. Th this is really what I'm saying here. I want p to look exactly like q except to have a smooth upper boundary. Th this is... I mean, so we at the moment only have uh, difficulties with it, and, and the question is, can we really get this off the ground? Well, we said, what's the first question is, uh, can we test feasibility? Yes, of course. All you have to, to do is check that x is positive and f of x is less than or equal to 1. What about the bottlenecks? That, that looks like the most difficult part. But actually, this is exactly where we're gaining. What seemed initially perhaps, you know, how, how would you go about this? This is precisely where we're gaining. Why? You see, Q now is something smooth. And you want to be, it's, it's, a, it's a small domain that's defined by X positive and F of X less than or equal to 1. How do you define geometrically a, a smooth domain, a, a convex smooth domain? You take uh, all the tangent planes, there are uncountably many of them. And you say, I have to be below that hyperplane. So rather than the finite list of inequalities there, I mean, it seems, again, at the moment, it doesn't seem too promising. It seems like we're really going, uh, you know, with our heads against the wall. But you'll see, don't, don't worry. Uh, we're replacing the finite list of inequalities that we had before by an infinitely, uncountably many inequalities, one per each hyperplane. But this is precisely where we're going to, to gain. So, Again, we're, we want to consider only points on the upper boundary of Q. Feasibility is all, uh, automatically there. And now we understand that we have to consider a Q as being defined by the intersection of all half spaces, one per each tangent plane. OK, so that's how what a, what a typical uh, tangent uh, hyperplane looks like, just like any hyperplane. And the uh, this hyperplane, so to be tangent, this means that this vector A here is a normal to Q at the point that it touches the, this domain Q. And every point in, in Z, every point Z in Q is determined by satisfying all this collection, uh, uncountably many inequalities of this form. Every hyperplane, you have to, that, that's a tangent, you have to, to, to lie under this uh, hyperplane. So, now think about this. You have a smooth domain like this. You have a point on the boundary. But now there is precisely, you, you can precisely characterize this, this, uh, this point. Why? It has to satisfy all these inequalities. But there is one equal inequality that it satisfies with equality. The, equality the, the inequality that corresponds to the tangent hyperplane at this point. Okay, so this precisely captures uh, the, the property that you want. What this means that in, in the smooth situation, we are really in, in dealing with a problem like this. Rather than the finite list of inequalities that we have, you have uncountably many, many uh, 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 restrictions, but every resource, at a, at a boundary point, every resource is a bottleneck resource. So now the thing that made the problem difficult before was that the set J was how to get our hands on. And now, although it's uncountable, we have it in everything, every resource is a, is a bottleneck resource. And uh, okay, so I'm cheating you a little bit, but let's. Yes, right, exactly. Okay, so now we've completely eliminated the, the trouble with the combinatorial complexity of the problem. In fairness, that's another thing. Fairness used to be an inequality. It's now becoming an equality. Okay? So even if, if uh, you know, I, I ran a little fast over this, let, let's, here is what, let me wrap up again what, what happens here. That's the requirement of, of a bottleneck. 
Xi times Ai is at least Ei. That replaces the Xi times Rij is at least e Ai. Where well, this is uh, just a, a normal to, to uh, the, a, the A vector is a normal to, to the, the upper boundary of Q. Here again the entitlement. So this means that we have to satisfy this inequality, but I know that this is one, and I know that this is one. This means that in, in, in this in the system of inequalities, all of them must hold with equality. In other words, and again, as I said, if, if this was a little too fast, this is precisely now we have reformulated the, the, the problem in the case of, of a domain with a smooth outer, upper boundary. What we're looking for is a positive vector x, where f of x is 1. This means it lies on the upper boundary of q, on the smooth upper boundary. And you have this system of, of equations. Ai times xi is ci, is ei times the constant. So this vector, where the i coordinate is ai times xi, is proportionate to the vector ei. And a, a is the normal, so again, X lies, X lies on the boundary of Q. It satisfies X is positive and F of X is 1. The normal to, to the upper boundary of Q at this point X is the vector A. And the condition is exactly what's written here. You multiply A and X coordinate wise and you get a vector that's proportionate to E. So the advantage that we've gained here is that now fairness has become a system of equations. Okay, good. And in fact now, so what AI, AI depends of, on X. AI, A is the vector, A is the normal, A is the normal vector to the upper bound. It's a good thing to repeat it. A is a normal to the upper boundary of Q at the point X. Okay, what F are we going to choose? That's the most natural choice. You can make many such choices. What about what, what happens to this function? You remember uh, that you remember that, that this expression had to be non-negative, so when I sum the minus the logs, it, this is a positive function. It vanishes near the origin of the at the origin of the quadrant, and it goes to infinity as I approach the boundary of, of P. So this is the F that I'm going to work with. Instead, I'm not quite going to, to work with this. What I'm going to work with is I'm going to, for every positive T, I'm going to consider this domain. X is positive and F of X is, is less than or equal to T, and I'm going to solve the problem there. And my solution is going to come from a passage to the limit as t goes to infinity. So let's see how this goes. This, think of this picture this way. Uh, this polytop or polygon in this case is p. These are the qt's. And what I'm going to do now, so I'm, I'm going to solve this problem using standard stuff from, from uh, ordinary differential equations for each qt. And I'm going to pass to the limit as t goes to infinity. So on each qt, what I'm going to do is seek. So qt is, is defined by this, where f is this expression with the logarithms. On each such thing, I'm going to find a point where equality holds and the normal times dx is proportionate to e. That I can do using standard things from, from differential equations. And then I want to pass to the limit as t goes to infinity. So this picture shows you, uh, first of all, the polytop p, then these different qt's. And now you can start saying, at the origin, it's very easy to solve this for t equals 0. I won't go into the detail. And now, as I go up with t, you see I have something like this, which takes me to So that, that's, that's the idea of, of the proof. Uh, so what remains to, to be done? Uh, this is at the moment, uh, this is realized by a MATLAB uh, program that, that does it, but we, uh, we would like to have a honest uh, polynomial time algorithm that solves the problem that, that we don't have. I don't think this is very difficult, but uh, uh, we still don't have a very good idea of what the solution set looks like. So one more thing about this not being a linear program, generically, when you set, fix the set J, there is a thing. So, so the solution set is, is a discrete set of points. For you fix a set J, then generically the solution is going to be a single point. And it may be interesting to uh, see 
whether we can select among them according to, to other criteria. Uh, in particular, can we guarantee a, a high utilization of the resources? Uh, that's, and while while uh, keeping things fair, uh, we still don't know about that, and this is where I stop. No, oh, so no, 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 fixing, no, no, fixing, you fix J. As I said before, if you go over all J's, when J is fixed, you're only solving a linear program. For a fixed J, for a fixed set J, you solve this linear program, generically its solution is just a single point. Okay, so for each J, you'll get a single solution, this is your solution set. At the moment, I don't have anything in the, I, I cannot say anything about poly time. I don't think it should be too difficult, but I think we were all exhausted after this project, so. Why do I believe? I don't know why. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 well, I really think that something a little like, like this game, no, no, I, I, you, you deserve a, a more serious answer. I, I think that something like this game can be done at least approximately with, with the, you know, using some, some, it's, it's some perhaps quadratic programming or things like this that, I, I think this can be imitated by, by polynomial time algebra, but it's, I don't know how to prove it, and if I knew, I promise I, I would have done it here. So I think it can be done. I don't think it requires some fantastic ideas, but we don't know how to do this. Ever. So you showed us in the beginning this sort of unfairness of the example you created. It, it has a property that you know you got your sort of share, but you know other people didn't seem to want this resource, and they get you know they have a really much bigger x than you have. Right. So it would certainly be more convincing as a fair thing if uh, everyone everyone using the same j resource. But, but I doubt that this, but I doubt that this can be done. Good point. That is one exists. So here is a proposal for something that I don't know if it exists. Uh, I like to not name a resource, but name a linear combination of resource. And to say, in your example, could say that, look, the bottleneck is the sum of all the resources. You all get one. No, no, but only, no. But you, you cannot have bottleneck. I mean, it's a combination of, of resources is going to be bottleneck only if they each individually are a bottleneck. If so but the fair, I mean, the fair is the fairness on the sum. In your example, that would create the right thing. Make everyone give their share. You said that the, 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 the bottleneck is the pool of the three resources. You could write that fairly. We have to give everyone share. We, we can discuss it. I'm, I'm not sure, but we can discuss. I, I, I'm not sure about this definition. No, I mean, this definition is not uh, carved in stone, but I, I, you know, I challenge you to find the... Uh, so I, I don't want to go get into this, and recently there was work in, uh, also in, in systems uh, research uh, looking uh, for other definitions. I, you know, I don't know of any definition that is better than this one. I agree it's not the most obvious, uh, as I say, it took me sometimes until I got used to it, but now finally I've become a believer, so uh, after some time. Thank you. 
Yeah, in fact, uh, Daniel Lehman suggested to me that, uh, he told me I didn't know about this, at least in the Los Angeles area, there is a, uh, a production of uh, gases that, that, you know, that, that, that there is a whole market where your factory is buying the permission to generate uh, some, some pollution permits. There is a, okay, okay, you guys know, I don't. And he said that, for example, this could uh, fit a situation like this. No, I, I, you know, I don't know, is Drogo here? I don't know. It's easier for me to, to, to stand behind the passage to continuous uh, things, you know, this is where I'm more at home. I, 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 all I'm saying about, about the definition that I think it's, it's a reasonably uh, natural definition, which as I said, it took me some time to, to get used to it, and I don't know a better one. So if you can come up with a better definition, fine. Yeah, so, so th this is, uh, it this is something that we really don't, uh, don't know much about, and I think it's still a good subject for, for investigation. We don't know much about this, but I think this is, this is the approach that, that is the most promising. I mean, for example, let me just say one quick thing. I, I know I was a little fast when I spoke about this, but this choice of, of F that I uh, introduced, that's very arbitrary. Just you know, I could put in yeah. some, some positive, positive coefficients here, and nothing in the, in, the, in the structure of the proof would change. On the other hand, it would lead me to a different uh, optimal solution. So perhaps with a clever choice of, of, of this function f, I can achieve additional goals here. I don't know, but this is, you know, I told you what, I, what we know, nothing, nothing beyond that. <laughs> 